Question seven. Six people are chosen at random and asked to name their birth months. Assuming that each month is equally likely, find the probability of at least two of the people having the same birth month. So the phrase at least, if we hear the phrases at least or at most in a probability question, we want to think of using the success and failure method. So if we wanted to try and find the probability of at least two people having the same birth month, that would mean, and, and bear in mind now we're choosing six people, that would mean two or three or four or five or six people having the same birth month. And that would take a long time to work out. So it's much easier to find the failure and then subtract that from one. So another thing to note is that if we're talking about birth months, well, there's 12 months in a year. So that's important to note. And it's also important to note that each month is equally likely. So any of the six people that we're choosing could have any of the 12 months to be their birthday. So January, February, March, up as far as December. So they have an equally likely chance of having any of the 12 months for their birthday. So let's start off with our experiment. So the experiment is ask six people their birth months. So n is equal to 12 by 12 by 12 by 12 by 12 by 12, which is 2,985,984. So each of these 12s can represent a person. So this first person, their birth month could be any of the months from January to December. So there's 12 possible outcomes for their birth month. The second person, likewise, they have 12 possible outcomes for their birth month. It could be any one of the 12 months. The third person has 12 possible outcomes for their birth month. The fourth person has 12 possible outcomes for their birth month. The fifth person has 12 possible outcomes for their birth month. And the sixth person also has 12 possible outcomes for their birth month. So 12 by 12 by 12 by 12 by 12 by 12. 2,985,984. So the success would be at least two of the people having the same birth month. So we're choosing six people. So if we want at least two of them to have the same birth month, this means two or three or four or five or six having the same birth month. But it would actually be even more complicated than that because if two of them have the same birth month, then it would be two with the same and four not the same. Because two plus four makes six. And then for three people having the same birth month, that would be three the same and three different. And then for the four people having the same birth month, that would be four the same and two different and so on. So you can see that it would work out to be a very long question indeed. So let's see, what is the opposite of this then? If this is the success, then what would the failure be? And the failure would be that the people all have different birth months, that every single person has a different birth month. So it's going to be much, much quicker to work this out and then to take our answer away from one and then to divide whatever we get by 2,985,984. So or is going to be 12 by 11 by 10 by 9 by 8 by 7, which will be 665,280. So the first person, if, if we want all the people who we choose, remember we're choosing six people, if we want them all to have a different birth month, then the 12 here represents the first person, whoever the first person is, it doesn't matter which of the six it is because order doesn't matter here. The arrangement doesn't matter. These are combinations. So the first person has a choice of 12 months. So their birth, their birth month could be any one of the 12 months of the year. But for the second person, remember, in order for it to be a failure, they all have to have different birth months. So whatever birth month this person has, doesn't matter what it is, let's say it's March, then March has already been used and this person only has 11 months left to choose from. 
In the same way then the third person only has 10 months left to choose from because two of the months are already gone because remember they have to have different birth months. For the fourth person same idea they've only nine months left to choose from because there's three months gone out of the 12. For the fifth person they've only eight months left to choose from because there's four months gone. The first four people have used up four of those months so eight minus four is 12 and then for the last person for the sixth person there's only seven months left to choose from because the other five people have already used one of the months. So in this way, all the people would have different months, different birth months. So 12 by 11 by 10 by 9 by 8 by 7, 665,280. And now all we have to do is divide these. So the purple number goes over the blue number and subtract from 1. Because remember, this is the failure, but we're interested in the success. So dividing and simplifying, we get 385,100. 1000 set over 1728 and subtracting that from 1 we're left with 1343 over 1728 so this is the probability that at least two people of the six chosen have the same birth month so again if you hear the phrase at least or at most you want to think of using this whole idea of success and failure question 8 there are 30 days in June. Five students have their birthdays in June. The birthdays are independent of each other and all dates are equally likely. What is the probability that at least two of the students have the same birthday? So similar to the last question, we hear the phrase at least and it's a probability question. So we want to think of using this whole idea of success and failure. So we're going to start off with our experiment. Our experiment is that five students have birthdays in June. So n is equal to 30 times 30 times 30 times 30 times 30, which is 24,300,000. So this first 30 represents the first person. Remember, there's five people all together. And this person's birthday could be any day from the 1st to the 30th, inclusive of June. So they have 30 possible outcomes of which day their birthday could be on. Remember... The birthdays are independent of each other and all dates are equally likely. So the second person has another 30 possible outcomes for their birthday. The third person has 30 possible outcomes for their birthday. The fourth person has 30 possible outcomes for their birthday. And the fifth person has 30 possible outcomes for their birthday. So multiplying, we get 24,300,000. So... The question said, what's the probability that at least two of the students have the same birthday? So this would take a long time to work out. So we're trying to, we're looking at five students. So if the probability is that at least two of them have the same birthday, that would be two or three or four or five have the same birthday. So that would take a long time to work out. So instead, we're going to work out the failure, what would be the opposite of that, and then take it away from one. So again, the success is at least two of the students have the same birthday. So as I said, this really means two or three or four or five of them have the same birthday. But doing it out the long way would be even more complicated than this, because if there's five students all together, it would be two have the same and three have different, or three have the same and two have different or four have the same and one has different or five have the same and none have different or just leave it at five has the same so it would take a long time to work this out so what would be the failure what's the opposite of that then well the opposite of that would be that all the students have different birthdays in june this is going to be much quicker to work out and then we just take our answer away from one so or is going to be 30 times 29 times 28 times 27 times 26, which is 17,100,720. So this 30 represents the first person. So it doesn't matter who the first person is. We just pick one of them. But the first person has 30 possible outcomes for their birthday. So we know that their birthday is in June. There's 30 days in June. So there's 30 possible outcomes for what day their birthday could be on. 
Now, if they all have to have different birthdays, then the second person only has 29 possible outcomes for their birthday because one day is already gone. It doesn't matter what that day is, but the first person's birthday is on one of the days in June. And that day is taken because remember, they have to have different birthdays. So the second person only has 29 possible outcomes or 29 days to choose from for their birthday. In the same way, the third person only has 28 days to choose from because the first and second people have used two birthdays already. So the third person only has 28 days to choose from. Likewise, the fourth person only has 27 days to choose from because there's three days already gone for the first, second and third people. So 30 take away 3 leaves us with 27 possible outcomes for the fourth person's birthday. And in the same way, the fifth person only has 26 days to choose from because there's five, four days already used up for, out of the month of June. So the first four people have birthdays that are different to the last person, different to each other. So there's only 26 days left they can choose from. So that's where these numbers come from. So 30 by 29 by 28 by 27 by 26 is 17 million 100 thousand uh, 720. So then dividing these will give us the probability of the failure and subtracting from one will give us the probability of success. So the probability of the failure will be 2,639 over 3,750 and subtracting this from 1 leaves us with 1,111 over 3,750. So this is the probability that at least two of the students have the same birthday.